The other day, you guys linked me to a tweet which showed that a particular person on Twitter was buying up a lot of RX 7900 XTXs, and they said that there was a lot more purchases to come within this tweet. And you guys wanted to know, is this going to be the next catalyst that affects GPU prices, especially gaming GPUs, which is what the said person in the tweet is saying that they're buying and they're also going to be buying more of. And is this going to be the catalyst that causes a whole repeat of 2020 and 2021's crypto boom, where gaming GPU prices saw a near triple in the pricing and this just made it unbearable if you were a pc gamer wanting to either upgrade your gpu or of course build a new gaming pc though in today's video we are going to look at the for and against and we'll start off with the against where there's actually some big things that are going on in the gpu space so let's take a look right after today's video sponsor Never pay full price for Windows 10 or 11 again. With today's video sponsor, SED Keys, you can get activated for as little as $15 using that coupon, BFTYC. Links in the description below. Welcome back to Tech Yes City, and you've seen this tweet. You've seen the follow-up. They're going to be buying a lot more GPUs, and if other people take on this trend, then that means GPU prices are just going to go through the roof, just like 2020 all over again. And there's some big differences this time. We'll talk about, first of all, the negative things here, however, if you want to buy a gaming GPU more specifically. And that is that this has, AI has the potential to definitely raise the prices of GPUs. Since the start of this year, we've seen a massive AI boom sweeping through, especially the corporate side and the investment side of things, where there is literally billions of dollars being invested from big companies like Microsoft and Amazon and Google. And these guys are all pouring in a lot of money either into already established companies like Nvidia, for example, or they're pouring it into new AI startups. And the biggest concern here is, is that a lot of these AI startups are going to need that juicy GPU compute power. And this is the reason why we've seen Nvidia's stock price triple in the last eight months. It's actually insane to see how much the value of their stock went up after the recent crypto bust that happened in 2022, where their stock price started going down. And if we look at AMD, their stock price has doubled. And if we look at Intel, their stock price, well, isn't doing so well, which we'll talk about right now. And so if we take a look at some benchmarks here from Puget Systems, they've recently benchmarked the AI capabilities of both AMD and NVIDIA. And they're showing that depending on the benchmark, NVIDIA can do really well and beat out AMD, or if you're using the different shark benchmark for stable diffusion, which is essentially an AI generation program that utilizes your GPU's compute power, you can see here that the AMD and Nvidia cards are doing very well depending on the benchmark. Now, when I tested this at my own studio here, the AMD and Nvidia cards were doing really well, generating images over a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels, in quite a short amount of time. However, the Arc A770 from Intel just wouldn't flat out work. So that's a bit of a problem if you're looking to invest in say Intel for their AI capabilities versus AMD and Nvidia, where they're doing a lot better at this point in time. And I, and I feel like this market sentiment is that if you want to invest in AI, you invest in Nvidia or AMD, and Intel has quite a bit of ways to catch up. So this is where I feel AI differs a lot from crypto in that it's purely going to be focused on improving products and services, especially efficiency in a lot of businesses. But automatically, unlike crypto, I feel like AI does have a lot of justification for its hype. And of course, when we translate hype into sales, that can really get things out of control really quickly. Meaning that if a lot of these AI startups start delivering in terms of utilizing these GPUs and providing products and services that equate to savings for a lot of corporations in the world, then you will see the demand for GPUs shoot up. So AI certainly has the potential to raise prices of gaming GPUs, but now we're going to go into the arguments as to why I don't think we'll see the price outbreaks that we saw in 2020 and 2021's crypto boom, where the GPUs just suddenly, the demand came out of left field and all of a sudden everyone wanted to get a GPU, whether it was for crypto mining to make money on or it was just for gaming. Those circumstances were much different to now. First of all, back in 2020, there was the money printers, they were spooled up at maximum potential. Money was so cheap. People wanted to get returns on their investments, so they took that cheap money, 
put it into crypto. And of course, you had GPUs with their hash power that could validate some of these networks, produce coins, and people could make a return on those. So naturally, they wanted to buy the GPUs to make money. And so that saw the massive sudden demand for GPUs skyrocket. But also we had another element added in there, and that was the COVID lockdowns. People were staying inside much more in this time frame, especially compared to the years before that, like 2018 and 2019, for example. And so people wanted to do a lot more PC gaming, so they wanted a gaming GPU too. And also on top of all that, thrown into this mix is inflation, more so sticky inflation, the kind that's not going away, which means that they've had less discretionary income to spend on things like gaming GPUs. So we've actually seen gaming GPUs, the cheapest they've ever been on the new market and the used market for quite some time. And so it's definitely safe to say that a lot of the demand for the gaming GPUs didn't just come from corporations who were making these big mining farms, but also came from the average individual, where I personally knew people who were buying up hundreds of GPUs and they were just small businesses. So they were definitely adding to the problem and they were causing the GPU prices to rise. This time around, if we go to places like vast.ai or tensordoc.com, we can see that these are places where people can rent AI power from GPUs that people are willing to rent out essentially. Now, the platform has to take a cut, of course. They're not gonna do this for free. And when we look at the prices here, people can rent out RTX 3090s for under 20 cents. And if you're looking at the kilowatt per hour, say the average cost of 15 cents per kilowatt hour, this makes it so that these people would really be making a couple of dollars at best on an RTX 3090. And then say for instance, they get their returns on investments for 200 days, that GPU has the potential to fail. And so this first factor alone makes it so that it's not so attractive on top of all that, Crypto was constant. You had your GPUs mining constantly for the network, getting returns. If you're renting a GPU out for AI, that person, once they're done with that rental service, will then stop and then you have to re-rent. And so I don't see the potential here for consistently good returns, unlike crypto, where it was a lot better for the individual who had a GPU. And then there's the last catalyst here, and that is if you are a business and you need serious compute power, from GPUs to process AI workloads. Are you going to rely on someone else you don't even know somewhere else in the world to do that for you? Say for instance, you got Romulus in Romania with his RTX 3090s hashing out the power for you. What if something happens to Romulus's GPUs, suddenly the thing fails and you're in the middle of a crucial critical service that you're providing someone and you can't just call up Romulus and be like, yo Romulus, fix those GPUs we need to get to work right away. I just don't think that's gonna happen. I think a business that's serious about uh, deploying products and services in this nature is not gonna have that business work model. They're gonna have their own servers, they're gonna have a redundancy plan available too. And so I feel like these products and services are just gonna be niche as opposed to crypto, which was a 24 seven thing. The lastly, the biggest reason not to be too concerned about this right now is the prices of GPUs are actually really good at this point in time. I've heard reports of the 7900 XTXs going over MSRP, but when I checked, they're still under MSRP. In Japan, they're some of the cheapest I've ever seen them, especially the AMD GPUs. Even RTX 4090s are coming in under MSRP right now. And so I feel like there's nothing to be too concerned about because this, even then, if the AI demand comes in and it starts buying up all these GPUs, it's going to be more geared towards the high VRAM GPUs. So I would say the 24 gigabyte models are gonna be the first target here because when I was doing some benchmarking on this stable diffusion, it actually ran out of VRAM on the 24 gigabyte RTX 4090. And so I had to actually cut down the resolution. And so that's going to be a big catalyst too. So if you're gaming and you just want to game at 1080p or 1440p, I feel like a lot of these AI workloads are going to need VRAM. And so you've got your eight gigabyte cards there. They're still perfectly fine for playing games. And so I feel like even if this demand came in sudden and came in hard, it would be for the more higher end cards and not the mid range cards, which I actually prefer the mid-range cards be unaffected as opposed to the high-end because that's where the majority of PC gamers lie. And so I feel like the eight gigabyte cards and even the 12 gigabyte cards and things like that will remain relatively unaffected. And the good thing is here is too, if you wanna get a gaming graphics card right now, the prices on these RX 6600s as well as RTX 4070s and 
RX 6700 XTs, for example, they're already extremely good at this point in time. Though closing off today's video, I will say that if you've been wanting to buy a GPU for a while, especially if you couldn't buy a GPU in 2020, 2021, then now's actually a better time than ever to get a deal both off the new market and the used market. And I feel like the used market's actually a better time than it's ever been in the history of gaming GPUs, where I've just been picking up some absolute bargains as of late. And also, as we talked about in a recent economics and finance video, AKA tech yesonomics video, we looked at why the entry level and also the mid-range GPUs, I feel like they're not going to come down a whole lot more, especially in relation to the new parts. The used market, I still feel there is a bit of potential to come down in prices there, but in terms of new GPUs, I feel like they're not going to come down a whole lot more and also if you're looking for a high-end gpu then as we discussed in today's video there actually is a lot of potential there to raise the prices of those higher end gpus especially the ones with big vram buffers anyhow guys hope you enjoyed today's video do let us know your thoughts and opinions as always just like this question of the day here which comes from halmo for peter 4805 can you make a video about the Windows settings that you've done? I would like to test those on mine. Ryzen 5900, or if you did, would you be able to link it? Thank you. So actually, in terms of lowering input latency, we've got a video coming out later this month where I'm looking at the biggest settings that affect input lag. There's actually three settings in general that have the potential to throw your input latency up. And that's not a good thing, especially if you're doing a lot of actions per minute. Wait for that one. It's coming. And with that aside, I'll catch you guys in another tech video very soon. If you haven't already and you stayed this far and you're enjoying that tech yes content, then you know what to do. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace out for now. Bye.